Guys, I want to review this uh, espresso machine. This is a uh, Gaja Barrera super automatic machine. And I'm going to go into all the details of how this works. And, and this video is not just for uh, coffee connoisseurs or, you know, hobbyists who, who love their coffee and have a passion for coffee. If nothing else, it's, it's an informative video for people who just didn't know about this kind of stuff. This is new to me. I knew that I wanted to, uh, you know, indulge into the, uh, the whole world of espresso and as well as different uh, milk-based coffee drinks. I've always been a coffee fan. Ever since I was about 10 years old, I like coffee. Of course, I've gone through different phases. As a 10-year-old, I love coffee like I guess most 10-year-olds do if you do drink coffee. And that's pretty much a whole lot of uh, milk and sugar with a little bit of coffee in it. <laughs> it's more like a candy milkshake than anything else. But uh, I remember taking a trip with my grandfather and um, he drank his coffee black. And he refused to ever prepare it the way I wanted it. So I got used to drinking black coffee on my trip. And I came back and I never went back. I, I preferred black coffee. Just very simple. I wanted the quality bean and then, you know, quality coffee to drink and not drown that out by sugar and cream. But uh, these days, I wanted, like I said, I want to experiment. I kind of got into the whole Starbucks thing. And I mean, not that I personally go, but, you know, learning and reading and, and hearing about people's experiences with different coffee houses and baristas and this, that, and the other thing. And it got interesting. And I thought, well, what's the big deal? I've never had a cappuccino. I've never had a, a latte. I've never had a macchiato. Uh, I never had any of these things, didn't know what they were, and I wanted to learn more about them. And as you guys should probably know by now, when I get into a hobby, I <laughs> dive in head first. And so I knew I was going to get uh, an espresso machine to try out, and I wanted to learn everything about it. And in doing research, I found a bunch of different companies, of course, that offer them. But there's one specific company that stood out to me in a lot of different ways. And before I really get into the review, I want to talk about that company in general. And they are Whole Latte Love. That's where I got this specific machine. That's where I got the coffee you see on the left-hand side, even the mugs on that are on the uh, um, cup warmer on top of the machine. Um, this company, first of all, their their website layout was by far superior to any other website. And in fact, I think it's a uh, it's a great format that I think any company can go by. When you go to their website. Everything is categorized so perfectly and so conveniently, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to look through. And I've literally spent probably two or three hours looking at all their products because it's so easy to use. Um, I really wish that other knife companies and uh, you know even gun-related stuff and all kinds of things that I'm interested in, all my different hobbies, uh, outdoor gear, any kind of uh, company that I'm going to be buying a product from, I wish it was set up in a very similar manner uh, to Whole Latte Love. And when you click on a product, the drop-down menus, they obviously have uh, uh, user feedback with uh, reviews. But the details they give you, not only on the product, but you know, even comparing it to other similar products you may like. Um, having an actual like chart that's showing you the differences and the pros and cons of different things. It's just a fantastic layout. I can literally make a 20-minute video just talking about their website. But more specifically, um, the people. The people who work there, I did find that they had a YouTube channel. Uh, in fact, I dropped down one of their product um, products I was looking at, and on the bottom was a, uh, a video. I started playing it, and I looked at the corner, I saw it was a YouTube video. I'm like, oh, cool. And I double-clicked on the uh, YouTube icon, and it brought me to their page. And it, I saw they had dozens and dozens of videos on different products that they offer. Uh, again, extremely professionally done. But the people, you can really tell that their staff knows what they're talking about, first of all. All right, when you're selling a product, you have to know that product, not just because you read a book on it you know, or a pamphlet or you took a class. You have to know the product because you use them. It's like anything else. You trust the people who actually use the products they sell. I had called them on the phone to get some more information about a product I was interested in, and I talked to both uh, Morgan uh, as well as Tracy, and they, they were really the friendliest people in the world, very, uh, very welcoming and warm, and of course answered all my questions that I had. Uh, I, I just I fell in love with the idea of this company and everything they stand for. So, anyway, I just want to say that I really wish that other companies were they're very ideal uh, as far as business goes. It's not just business. It, these are people who use these things every single day. They're down to earth. They're people just like you and me. And it's really really fun to relate to the people you're actually buying products from. Now, like I said, I can go on for 20 minutes just talking about the website and the people. Uh, I, I'm just a huge fan, and I, I can promise you that if I need anything coffee related. Even remotely coffee related or tea related, uh, they are my go-to company. Uh, just extremely happy with them. But uh, anyway, yes, on to the actual review here. Um, yes, this is a, a Gaja Barrera. Gaja is the, uh, the brand of machine and the Barrera is the specific model. Uh, Gaja, like many other companies, have many different models. The, uh, the pros of this specific model, the, the biggest attributes of this is that it's, it's size, pretty much. Okay, This is 
12 inches tall. There's a standard ruler here. All right, um, a lot of these uh, super automatic machines tend to be a little bit bigger. Um, the pro with this machine is, first of all, affordability is definitely uh, on the cheaper side. Now, when I first did a little preview of this video, um, people, of course, immediately, very interested, look it up, and they go, wow, it's $674.25. And they go, wow, I probably wouldn't spend that much uh, on a coffee machine. Well, this isn't a coffee machine. Um, in fact, this uh, being a super automatic espresso machine and the quality that it does have, that is a fantastic price. Um, it is on sale currently on the website. Um, the MSRP is 800. Now I know for a lot of people, if you're just an average person who you know has a $10 coffee machine and just makes straight black coffee or whatever, um, that seems ridiculous. But you have to put things in perspective. Just to give you an idea, uh, other super automatic espresso machines can range anywhere from uh, 400 bucks to 3,200 dollars. Okay, when you go into uh, some of the um, you know big. Uh, company machines that make you know three espressos at a time you're talking up to sixteen thousand dollars for an espresso machine so believe it or not this is definitely on the more affordable side and like anything else it's it's specific to uh, someone who wants that quality or and or convenience um, this machine is, is pretty much um, a great benefit to anyone who ends up visiting places like Starbucks or their local coffee houses or baristas and you're paying six, seven dollars for a couple, a specialty cup of coffee, and you're talking about people who do this daily, if not multiple times every single day. Uh, you easily spend thousands of dollars on coffee already, so investing five or six hundred bucks uh, into a machine like this, believe it or not, is a huge, huge money saver. But like anything else, it's not for everyone. If I do a review on a four hundred dollar knife, not everyone's going to be interested. It really is no difference. It, you have to put it in perspective. But as far as what this machine has to offer, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Now, what is a super automatic espresso machine? Um, there's a lot of different ways you can make espresso, and um, this is the literally the most convenient way. A super automatic is kind of like what it what it suggests. It does everything for you. It's it's totally automated. Um, this is what's referred to as a bean to cup machine. You put fresh roasted whole coffee beans in the top. Turn it on, push a button, and you have fresh roasted uh, espresso. And of course, you can use that to make a multitude of drinks. And yes, you can make regular old black coffee. And now towards the end of the review, I will uh, tell you um, why I really prefer this machine over just the standard traditional drip coffee style. And it's basically how it's brewed. It, it really, you could take the exact same coffee um, and prepare it in four different machines you know, or by hand and get four different flavors. So we'll talk more about that later in the review. Now, of course, with any machine or specifically any product, there's gonna be pros and cons, nothing's perfect. Um, where this really shines, I think, is it's the fact that it's so compact, okay? Um, this is only 12 inches high, all right? And about 12 and a quarter inches to the very uh, highest point of the machine, which is the lid for the bean hopper on the back. A lot of people have a limited height on in their kitchen because of their cabinets. Now, if I put the camera up, you'll see that I still have some excess room on top here. So size isn't a huge issue. Um, I still like the fact that it's very compact here. Uh, price is an issue, okay? There's a lot of different factors and people pick different machines for different reasons. Does the $500 machine make coffee just as good as the $3,200 machine? In most cases, yes, it really just depends. I think personally that it comes back to uh, whatever coffee beans you're putting into it. You have a quality coffee bean, the machine plays a little part in how it's gonna taste. However, um, this machine is still extremely capable and I think would make just as good of a cup of uh, you know, uh, coffee or a uh, shot of espresso just as much as the, the $2,000 machine or the $1,500 machine or anything else. But um, the pros of the machine on this specific machine are very great. The biggest one obviously is size. A lot of people do have that limited uh, counter space uh, as specifically the counter uh, height because of their cabinets being over top. But besides that, uh, two features on this machine that I really, really like compared to a lot of the other machines is the fact that both the water reservoir and the, uh, the drop container where your, your uh, used coffee grinds, actually coffee pucks, because it's, you'll, you'll see that later, but they both uh, are in the front. So very easily accessible. Once I turn this machine on and push it back into the nook, I keep this in the corner of my, uh, uh, my kitchen counter here. Um, I don't have to touch it. I don't have to constantly move it. A lot of these different machines, your water reservoirs are on the side or even the back. And you're talking about handling your machine constantly. And every single time you move your machine, you have a possibility of damaging it. You know, it can fall over in the sink, you could drop it off the floor, 
whatever. I mean, of course, you know, you want to be careful, but it's a huge convenience, in my opinion, to have these, everything's accessible from the front. That's it. There is a power switch on the back. It's like the, the master uh, power for the machine. And then, of course, you have a power, an on and off switch on the front. This is a uh, money-saving machine, as opposed to some of the other ones that will draw uh, more electricity. But I do like the biggest thing for me, not only being compact, but it's, it's also the fact that you can access both the reservoir and the, uh, you know, kind of garbage container, I'll, I'll call it, or drop box, um, from the front, which is really, really nice. Um, some of the downsides you get, because it is smaller, obviously, capacity. The bean hopper on top, which I'll show you in a second, uh, holds a maximum of 8.8 .8 ounces of beans, and the water reservoir holds about 40 ounces of water. Now, for me, in my specific use for this, which is, you know, on a uh, on an average basis, I'll probably make one to two coffee drinks a day with this machine. If you're someone who makes eight or nine or ten cups of coffee or, you know, shots of espresso or, or whatever, any kind of milk-based coffee drink, and you're constantly using a machine or perhaps you uh, constantly entertain, maybe you're in a household with ten people in it, who knows, um, you'd probably want to go with something that's bigger for the, the sheer fact that you don't have to put water in it as often, you don't have to fill the bean hopper as often. Uh, you know, pretty, pretty simple um, things to think about there, but they, they might be overlooked. Uh, definitely pros and cons and everything. The biggest con with this is be the fact that it is smaller. You do have to um, fill the hopper and the water more often, as well as, as empty your, your dump uh, tray there. So just something to consider for my personal use. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, since I had this machine, I put fresh beans in once and I uh, filled the water twice. Not a big deal. Uh, by the way, this... Uh, this does not come with it, but in the water reservoir, pull this whole thing out for you. You do have a uh, um, a place to put a filter if you want to put a uh, like a charcoal filter in here or something. I've been filling this machine with spring water, and it's been fine. It has not affected, in my opinion, the taste of the coffee. But if you want to use tap water, you know you can easily put in a uh, a filter uh, system in that reservoir. All right. So yes, you are limited in your capacity. So if basically, if you're using the machine quite often or have a high volume of use, you may want to prefer, or you may want to consider a, uh, a larger machine. But for me and my uses, I think it's absolutely perfect. I don't need the smaller space, but of course, I value my countertop space. I got all kinds of crap on my counter. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, on the back is the uh, on-off switch right next to the power plug. So once we turn this on, You'll see our power button is going to just slowly flash red. And that's normal just to continuously do that. On top here, here's where the, the cup warmer is. I'll bring the camera in a little bit. I'll show you some detail here. So let's pull the machine forward more. Move our cups for a second. All right, now on top here on the front where the cups you see, this is where I store these cups, these glasses. This is a, uh, a cup warmer on the top. Now this is passive meaning that it, there's not a specific heating element that's keeping this hot. You know, you're not pushing a button and starting this to get it nice and warm. Uh, being passive, basically as your, your uh, boiler inside is heating water and stuff like that, the steam that is, you know, produced by the machine, either by, you know, the, um, the steam wand or internally, it's basically rising. Heat rises, steam rises, so this does get a little bit warm. I did find that this does not get incredibly hot, so you'll never burn yourself on it, first of all. But I prefer um, to warm my cup because when you're pouring your shot or, or having a cup of coffee, it's something I never really even thought of until I started watching uh, some of these videos on their on Whole Latte Loves uh, YouTube page. Is when you're pouring hot coffee into a you know cold cup or even a room temperature cup, you're losing the heat of your coffee. Your, the cup itself is immediately shocking that heated coffee and pulling the temperature down, and um, you know, your coffee cools off faster. So it makes sense to warm your cup, uh, you know, before you actually fill it with coffee. It's something really simple I, I never thought of. I just never thought of that. And believe me, it makes a difference. But what I'm, the point I'm trying to make here is that this passive cup warmer on top, although it does get warm, it doesn't get warm enough for my preference. So what I do is when um, the machine pushes water through the, uh, the steam wand to clean it, I'll fill my cup with that. Or when it does its uh, rinse cycle, which you'll see here when you turn the machine on after it's been off for a while, it will go through a rinse cycle. Okay, basically pump hot water uh, through the machine to clean everything out. If there's a, you know old coffee sitting in there in the lines or something, it cleans all out, which is fantastic. What I'll do is before I make a cup of coffee, I will uh, fill the cup. With, I'll use the cup I'm going to make the coffee in to catch that water and therefore warming my cup. 
Okay, or if you want to, you can get hot water from your steam wand uh, to fill your cup to keep it warm as well. But anyway, that's the passive uh, cup warmer. A lot of these uh, super automatics will have some form of a cup warmer. Uh, some of the bigger ones and or more expensive ones have a specific heating unit that's made just to heat that, okay, whether it's electronic or from the boiler itself. But on top here, we have our bean hopper. All right, there's a, uh, a lid for it with a rubber seal on it so it keeps all the air out of your beans so they keep nice and fresh. All right, like I said, it holds up to uh, 8.8 .8 ounces in here. Um, what I'm using, the coffee I've been using lately is this, uh, it's actually from Whole Latte Love. They have their own, uh, a couple different coffees, but this is the uh, Buzzopolis, and it's a dark roast um, whole espresso beans. And uh, <laughs> this is really, really good coffee. I don't know if it's specifically because the coffee beans are so good or the fact that I've never had like a pressure brewed cup of coffee or, you know, espresso or anything like that. But it is the flavors that I'm getting out of this coffee are off the charts. It's phenomenal. It's really, really delicious. This specific coffee, you actually get uh, a very slight um, uh, kind of a smokiness and a slight berry flavor. And I actually prefer to uh, make espresso shots with this specific coffee. And when I'm making like just a, a, a longo or a long cup of coffee, you know, traditional black coffee, whatever, um, I'll actually use a different bean. Uh, and I've used ground coffee as well. I always keep ground coffee on hand. Just really cheap, you know, I think this is, uh, I think it's Maxwell House or something. Just some cheap, whatever, pre-ground coffee. And they have a uh, bypass doser here you can put grinds in, which is a huge, a really big beneficial feature. I think pretty much every super automatic espresso machine has this option. So if you don't have access to whole coffee beans, um, or perhaps you don't want to spend the money on whole coffee beans, tend to be more expensive. Um, you have pre-ground coffee, whether it's really high-end or really cheap, you know, crappy coffee. <laughs> Either way, uh, you can directly put this in here and it comes with uh, its own scoop. The machine comes with this plastic scoop you see right there. And it's the exact dose you want for a, uh, you know, for this specific machine. And basically, you know, you don't have to even touch the lid. When the lid's on, you have access to this uh, bypass doser and you put your grinds right in there. Now you can put your grinds in there to make regular coffee. You can do anything with that, but basically have the option to not grind fresh beans, okay, and to just use ground coffee, pre-ground coffee. The biggest benefit to this is if perhaps someone doesn't like the coffee you have in here, or the big example, you know, you see a lot of them uh, talk about is uh, decaf. You have some kind of, uh, I don't know, entertaining situation, and someone doesn't drink regular coffee, they drink decaf. Or you have a flavored coffee bean or something, and they don't, or let's say you have a regular coffee bean, they want a flavored coffee. All you have to do is open this lid here, which is accessible from the top of the machine, pour in your pre-ground coffee, and you can make just that. You don't, it's just completely separate from this. Now, the Super Automatics, they grind your coffee as well. I'm just gonna turn the machine on for a second here and put the cup in. So while I'm talking, it can go through that rinse cycle. Push that back so you can see that as well. Um, yes, all the uh, Super Automatics will have their own um, built-in grinder. That's bean to cup, it's doing everything for you. So you actually have a coffee grinder within the machine itself which is fantastic. And what happens is when it goes on, it vibrates and um, pulls all the beans down in there and grinds exactly what you need for one brewing process. All right, and every single time you brew, it grinds fresh coffee beans. So right now it's doing like the, uh, the pre-brew wash. And it's gonna push some hot water through the system. And again, it's just, just cleaning it out right now, which I think is awesome. You don't want old residual coffee, you know, in your new cup. Put this lid back on. Oh, actually, you know what? Something else I want to show in here. Pull this back forward. When you're, uh, when you're grinding your coffee, you have an adjustment knob here uh, for your grinds, all right? There's five different adjustments, and basically this is how fine your coffee grinds are. When you're making espresso, you want a really fine setting. Okay, so when the, the water, hot water is pushed through your, your grinds, the finer it is, the more flavor you're really picking up on that. It's very kind of condensed flavor. If you're making a traditional cup of coffee, regular old coffee, you know, whether it's black or you put cream and sugar in or whatever, um, while the grinder's on, that's when you adjust this and you basically rotate this to a, a higher uh, or a bigger circle. I don't know if you can see those on there. 
but basically that's you know showing you that it's a uh, you know the grind setting so there's five different grind settings on this and if I'm making a regular cup of coffee I will as it's starting to grind I'll turn that over and it'll basically open up where it's grinding and it'll, it'll grind a, uh, a coarser grind okay so put this back on here now I'm going to uh, of course I'll demonstrate and I'll show you I want to make a uh, a shot of espresso first just to show you what it's like and get rid of this hot water now in the front here where the uh, the coffee dispenses out there is an adjustment pull on both sides this will raise and lower the uh, the spout where it's actually coming out so if you have a uh, smaller cup here let's say this cup you just want a shot of espresso or something um, it basically you can adjust this down to prevent some splashing. Uh, I found that, I, I haven't used this, honestly. Since I've had the machine, I've had it up the entire time to accommodate larger cups. And believe it or not, this will accommodate a fairly large mug. All right, here's one of my favorite Pottery Barn mugs. And fits perfectly under there. So, it, you know, when I wanna make a long coffee or something, or even if I'm making a, uh, a latte, I'll use something like this. But um, that's what that's for, is to, uh, to minimize your splashing. But I found that even even like that, it doesn't really splash, but if you wanted to, you can pull it all the way down. If you had an actual, a much smaller cup um, for your shot of espresso, you can do that. So that does adjust. So anyway, let me, uh, let me talk about this drip tray real quick. Everything rests on here. This is your drip tray, which is pretty straightforward in case you make a mess or whatever. It's not going on your countertop. It's catching any residual um, splash or anything like that, particularly when you're using the steam wand. Um, once you take it, you know, whatever container you're steaming your milk in or frothing your milk. Um, when you take it away, it might drip or whatever, so you can angle it back here. Of course, if you pull this away, your cup, you know, after you pull your shot of espresso and it drips down, whatever, it's not going on your countertop. But I like this, it's very easily removable. Pretty much all these machines are the same thing. All things slides out. In this specific case, it's a plastic drip tray and it has a, uh, a metal insert on top. If I lift this up, you'll see it's very easy to clean. Just wash it in the sink. What's pretty cool about this too is that there's a, a little plastic piece in here that floats all right and it pushes up and obviously you can see it's like a bright international reddish orange color so basically as you're going through the process of using the machine this will slowly push up and up and up as it gets filled up to let you know that it's time to uh, empty your tray and there, it holds quite a bit of water you can see it goes all the way in the back of the machine there so the whole thing just pushes right in all right, so first I want to show you, I'm just going to brew a uh, shot of espresso to show you the, uh, the motions here and show you the buttons and stuff like that. So I'm going to put my little mug under there. Let's pull this forward so you can get a better look at it. So once you turn on, like I said, um, when you turn on the, the power switch on the back there, this front will be flashing red. Once you push it, the machine's on. When you push it off again, it just goes back into a power save mode. Okay, let's turn it back on. A bunch of different icons here. They're very straightforward. They use... Obviously the pictures represent what it is. Basically four buttons on the front here, your control buttons. Um, the power one, which I already showed you. Underneath it, there's a, a coffee bean and a little scoop. Now when you cycle through here, you basically have four options, okay? The first option here is a little one bean, all right? The second one's two beans, the third one's three beans, and the last one is that little scoop. This is gonna be your, um, you know, how powerful your coffee is, how strong it is. One being, you know, weak, weaker coffee, two being a medium roast, and then three being basically a bolder or darker, stronger roast. All right, excuse me, not roast, um, actually your shot. So when you change the amount of beans, you're changing the amount of uh, coffee it's grinding. Okay, if you want a, a lighter coffee, it, it's not gonna grind as much. You go on three beans, it's gonna grind the maximum for that specific shot. I found I happen to prefer really strong coffee, so I always stay at three beans. What's pretty cool is that when you go to that fourth option, it goes to the little scoop, and that's when you use your bypass doser on top. If you're putting pre-grounds in there or pre-ground coffee, you put it directly in there, and then you want to make sure you're on your scoop so it knows to pull it from there as opposed to grinding. As far as the grinder inside this machine, um, it, it's pretty quiet. Uh, I have a Keurig. Actually, it's right here. I still use it. It's still an awesome machine, but nothing like this. Um, that thing's pretty loud. <laughs> I have the first first generation one. And when that thing's going, it is screaming in the morning. It wakes me up. Um, with this machine, with the grinder on, it's, it's pretty quiet. Um, it's not dead silent, but it's not rumbling or anything like that. Even though it's vibrating in there, it's pretty contained and, and pretty quiet. Um, 
So yes, I'm gonna go to three beans for the strongest coffee, or the most grinds available. And then you have two buttons on the left here. The top button is showing, let me zoom in here so you can see it's a little better. The top button is showing a, um, like a half filled cup, and then the bottom one's a more filled cup. You can easily program these. It's really easy to program. Basically, when you get your machine new, when you uh, or at any point you can program these and change the you know how it's programmed. Basically, you push and hold the button down. You hold it the, down the entire time. It's going to first grind your beans, then um, you know fill up. It's going to tamp inside, which is basically compressing the coffee grounds, and then it's going to start brewing. You hold this down the entire time. Okay, once it starts brewing, your shot inside you let go when that's enough and it will always remember that exact amount not how much you're grinding um, but it's good amount it's good to uh, remember exactly how much uh, coffee it's actually dispensing into your glass so what I've done is I program this to basically be one shot of what I would consider one shot of espresso and then um, on the bottom button it's the same thing you can program whatever you want but for this one I programmed it for a for my specific mug so when I push this, it'll brew coffee until that specific mug is filled to where I want it. Really, really simple, really straightforward. At any time at all, I can push and hold that, and I can actually you know, reprogram it. It's really, really simple. I love that feature. Now, at any point in time, if you push this button once, it'll show just the one cup here, and it'll brew your one shot. Uh, if I push it twice, it'll show the double cup, and basically that's two shots. What's cool about this is that if it does two shots, it'll go through the entire process again and grind fresh beans. It won't put hot water through those already used beans, okay? So if I do two shots or even two cups of coffee, it'll go through the whole process twice, all right? So if I happen to have company or something, or if I happen to want two cups back to back <laughs> as fast as I can, um, I would just double hit the button. Um, that's pretty much it for the buttons on the front here. Then you have uh, this kind of a knob. Now you have two position, well, three positions. Right now it's just on the, the upright position, which, which it has to be in to brew your coffee. Uh, to the left, if I return this to the left, which I'll show you in a couple minutes, um, it'll go to the steam option, and to the right will be hot water. You can dispense hot water with this machine if you're making a cup of tea or doing whatever. Like I said, if I wanted to just put some hot water in my cup to warm it, I can do that. So it does just dispense water. So I'm going to, let's just make uh, one shot of espresso real quick and take a little sip and try it and just to show you how it works. And then after that, I will make a, uh, a milk-based drink so you can see how that, the, the steam wand works. So by the way, at any point in time, if you're out of water or if your garbage container is filled up with grinds, um, you will have a blinking light, you know, the appropriate light that'll come up either on top or the right and just letting you know what the deal is. All right, so it, it's very good about letting you know if something's wrong, so it's not going to go through a cycle and then you're going to run out of water or something. It'll let you know in advance. Uh, as you saw before, it's really easy. You just pull these containers out. Now, when they're out, you'll also get that same warning light. So if I'm out of water or if this, con if this container is not properly seated in, I'll have that warning light. All right, same thing on the other side. The garbage. The warning light comes up here, which shows a little bucket with, like, pucks in it. And once I brew a cup here, I will show you what the, the uh, coffee grinds look like as well. Really easy to clean up. So anyway, put my mug under there. I'm using a clear one. These are really cool Italian mugs, or glasses I should say. I got these as well from uh, Whole Latte Love. And these little metal rings pop off so it's easy for cleaning. But it's kind of a traditional Italian uh, espresso mug. It's pretty cool. I like it. So anyway. Um, Alright, so power's on. All you have to do, this is preset for one shot. So I'm going to push this button. I already selected how strong I want my coffee. It's three beans. So I'm pushing the button once, and I'll go through the process. As things are happening, I'll tell you what's going on. So first, grinding our beans. Pulling the appropriate amount of beans down into the grinder. What you're hearing now is the uh, a pre-soak. What it does is this noise right there, it's wetting my grinds first so that um, when it brews through, it's, uh, it's already prepped. It's better for brewing. Zoom in on that. You can see there's two, it dispenses out of two holes. This is pretty pretty uh, common for any espresso machine to, to uh, pump out of two holes here. So what you can do is you can actually put two glasses side by side. 
All right, so that it's actually brewing into two glasses at the same time, whether you're doing two shots or whatever you're, whatever you want to do. It'll pretty much every machine, whether it's super automatic or semi-automatic, um, it will have two spouts that it's actually brewing out of. So that's pretty much it. I have a shot of espresso. You can see the crema, which is on top. Basically, when you're making espresso, and this is for people who just don't know anything about it all, and this again, it's all new to me. Um, the difference between regular coffee and espresso is espresso is pressure brewed through finer grinds, okay? So what's happening is you're, you're putting pressure on that water and pushing it through the grinds as opposed to a drip style coffee, your regular old coffee pot where basically gravity is pulling the water down through coarser grinds. And what happens is as it's pushing through, it's almost like it, it comes out in like a froth. It doesn't come out like a liquid, it comes out like a, a froth or a foam. And the foam that settles on top is known as the crema. And it's very sought after to have a very rich, thick, creamy crema. It's where a lot of the oils collect from the coffee beans. It's extremely flavorful. Um, so this is what I just have it set for one shot. It's a little bit of a heavy shot. Most people would have it set for a little bit less. But you can see nice, rich, foamy crema on top. All right, and as it's uh, actually brewing, you can see it, it kind of settling. It's actually fun to watch. <laughs> Maybe I'm easily amused, but anyway, let me take a little sip of this. Extremely rich, delicious. I mean, I've never had espresso before I got this machine. Never, like I said, been to Starbucks and all these different places and, and you know, had these specialty coffee drinks, but it's phenomenal. Someone who, for the last five years, have been drinking black coffee, you know, cheap old black coffee. Um, it's a big difference. Uh, the flavor you get from this is, is outstanding. This specific coffee, like I said, the uh, Buzzapolo, uh, excuse me, Buzzopolis, can't talk. Um, very rich. I do prefer it straight as opposed to the uh, um, the mixed drinks and stuff where you're making lattes because, uh, I don't know, there's just so much flavor I hate to drown it out. I, I would give the comparison you use Jack Daniels to make a Jack and Coke. You don't necessarily want to mix. Um, a really expensive high-end single malt scotch with coca-cola um, this has so much flavor in it as it is I'd hate to add milk to it now, not that it's a big deal or anything but I actually prefer uh, Illy I've been using a lot of Illy coffee as well as uh, La Baza lately and trying different drinks and uh, just awesome but this Bazopolis is fantastic just as is just straight um, now if you wanted to make a uh, uh, Americana which from what I understand, is basically a shot of espresso with hot water in it. So let's say you make, make espresso and it's a little strong for you or you just don't, you know, it's too much. And it's delicious. Um, all you want to do is add hot water to it and that would be an Americana. So what I'm going to do is just for demonstration purposes here, I'm going to switch this over to the, uh, the water. All right. I'm just going to dispense hot water into my cup. Now that first little bit was basically the uh, the cleaning of it, but since it's hot water I want, I'll just throw up my cup anyway. And there we go. So now I basically thinned out my shot of espresso into a, uh, a less strong coffee drink, an Americana. I'm still getting a lot of that flavor, but it's definitely dulled out. Um, I've had, uh, I make longos, which basically is pulling a shot of espresso, but continuously pulling water through it and it thins it out. It's very similar to this, an Americana and a longo, or a long coffee, but the flavors, believe it or not, are different depending on how you brew it. But um, this is a great method for just morning coffee. If you don't want something like an espresso, you just want a regular black cup of coffee or want to add a little cream or sugar, you know, standard coffee stuff, um, this is a great way to do it. And you're still, I'm still getting a lot of the same flavors, but it's not as concentrated. So, still absolutely delicious, though. Um, let's see, what else can I show you? Yeah, so obviously you see the water dispensing through the, uh, the steam wand. The steam wand itself, there's a rubber uh, nub on here. It's very smooth and fluent to move around and to, to rotate. Um, very easy to use. The wand part itself on the bottom here is uh, it doesn't it gets pretty warm but it won't burn you or scold you and by the way this just pulls right off there's a rubber you know two rubber seals here so easy cleaning you see the tip there you get with this now something to note here is uh, the front of this there's a little pinhole I'm gonna get in close and show you this 
that little pinhole right there. It's very important if you get any machine to make sure if you have something similar to this, this frothing wand, uh, to keep that clean. Okay, when you're frothing milk, if you get milk in there and it dries up and it clogs up, it's not going to froth properly or steam properly. Basically, um, that's pulling in air while you're dispensing hot steam. So if you wanted to steam uh, your milk or cream or whatever you're doing, you'd want to uh, put this all the way down so that that's covered and that'll just steam it. As opposed to if this is uh, open to the air, it'll pull air in and it'll froth your milk. So just an important little note. And what I do is I always uh, line this hole up on the front so that I can always see that and make sure it's not clogged. Just a little tip for basically more or less for cleaning to make sure your machine's working properly. I see some people have problems with this where it says, ah, oh, it's not really, not this specific machine, but all kinds of machines that I've been researching and stuff. They say, oh, it's not working great. And then always the problem is usually with the steam wand, they don't clean out that little hole. Um, let's see, what else can I do? Take a little sip here and regroup. Oh, that's good stuff. Um, showed you a shot of espresso. Showed you, uh, you know, putting some water in there, making a uh, Americana. Let's do a milk-based drink. Uh, let's make a cappuccino. Cappuccinos are fun to make and, and watch and look at and all that kind of stuff. So, I have my little pitcher here of milk. Now, something to note here is using the, um, the frothing wand. I know it's ideal to use a steel pitcher, a small steel pitcher. I mean, they're, they're made specifically for you know, espresso machines and, and frothing milk and stuff like that. It's very ideal, even more so, to have a, a little um, thermometer uh, to hook to the side of it so you can get your ideal uh, heat. You know, when you're making drinks like this, when you're, you're warming and frothing the milk, you want to stay within a certain range, and I believe like 160, or nothing past 160, any, anything from 140 to 160 is okay. You don't want it too cold, you don't want it too hot. Once you get milk to a certain temperature, you're scolding it, you're basically burning it like anything else. It'll taste bitter and gross and stuff like that. So definitely take some finesse. I'm um, using this wand. It was really easy to accustom myself to it. I'm still experimenting. And like I said, I don't have a proper pitcher. I've been steaming my milk and stuff in this ceramic uh, little milk pitcher or creamer um, only because it matches my <laughs> pottery part mug. So I went and got the matching thing. But um, yes, it's ideal to use a metal pitcher. And that's something I will get in the future to you know do lattes and stuff like that. So... But anyway, what I'm going to do is let's prepare this in this other glass so you can actually see it, which would be fun. Um, and I'm going to steam my milk right in, to make a cappuccino, I'm going to steam it right into the, uh, the mug itself. So I don't need a, uh, a separate pitcher for that. So we're going to pour some, some milk in here. Now, for a cappuccino, it's going to be a very frothy, airy milk. So it's going to rise in volume. You don't want to overfill your cup as I'm steaming this. It's not only warming it, but it's creating lots of bubbles and it's aerating it. So it's going to literally rise in volume. Now I want to do this until it gets to the top of here. And then I'm going to put it underneath. I'm going to brew my shot right into there. And you'll see how it kind of, it levels out. It's actually really cool. The, um, the shot of cappuccino levels out. The crema kind of stays on top. And then it creates like a line out of nowhere. And then starts dropping where it gets more dense. It's pretty interesting and cool. But uh, let me brew a, uh, or excuse me, let me froth my milk first. Now, when you're making something like a latte, you'd want to brew your shot first, then froth your milk later. Something a little different. I will well, once I get a metal pitcher, I'll show you that stuff in the future because I want to get into like latte art and pouring cool little things and stuff like that. But <laughs> you know, I'm I'm a hobby man, so I love to get into that part of it as well. But anyway, basically, what I do is I'm going to point this towards my drip tray first because it's going to shoot some hot water through there. You don't want hot water in your milk; it's just going to thin it out, and it's not what you want. So. I'm going to rotate this to the other side where it's pointing at the steam. It's going to shoot out a little bit of steam here. Or excuse me, a little bit of water to clean it. All right. I'm going to put this into my cup. Give it a second to uh, start creating that steam. Now I want to leave the tip basically just underneath this uh, top of the uh, milk. I just want to create that air. You can see it's rising in volume. I'm actually going to bring this all the way in because I want to raise the heat a little bit without creating more volume because it's at the top already. All right. Bring that back down. Put my cup right in front of there. 
and brew a shot of espresso. Same thing, three beans. Now I found this machine, it takes about 21 seconds to brew a shot of espresso. I think 26 seconds is perfectly ideal. Um, the amount of time it takes the coffee or the water to go through the coffee grinds will definitely con you know, control basically how much flavor you're getting out of that coffee. For espresso you want to take a little bit of time, you don't want it to just shoot through right away. zoom here and that is a perfect cup of cappuccino so let me give a little taste test here mmm that is delicious and I have a little milk mustache which I'm glad you can't see <laughs> it's probably embarrassing um, yes makes perfect I mean the froth thing is really simple to do it does take a little bit of time to, uh, to kind of hone in how to use it. Of course, me not knowing anything about this and just you know watching some YouTube videos and stuff. I have to say, um, I'm also gonna link you guys to uh, Whole Latte Love's um, page here on YouTube as well because I learned most, I would say 80% of what I know about um, about making these drinks and stuff from their videos. Very comprehensive, very, very professionally done, but like I said, warm and inviting. You know, the people there are just fantastic, and I can go on and on about them. I just had a really, really nice experience with them. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Uh, there, there's plenty of different things you could do with this. Like I said, you can make regular old um, black coffee. If you're if you're not into all this kind of stuff, or let's say let's say you're really into this as like the man of the house, and your wife is like, eh, I'm not really into that, then just I want a regular cup of coffee. Or probably the other way around your wife is into having cappuccinos and lattes and stuff and the guy's like just give me a black cup of coffee uh, it's very simple all you have to do is um, open your lid to your bean hopper um, you would press your your long coffee setting whatever you've uh, pre-programmed that to um, take your lid off hit your button to start brewing as it starts grinding uh, rotate your knob to a coarser grind okay and basically that'll um, put the, the coarser grinds in there and brew your regular cup of coffee. But there, there is a huge difference. Uh, your average coffee maker, you know, whether it's the, the $5 glassine you, know, you get at Walmart or you know, a nicer uh, coffee pot or machine, um, it's, it's a drip style coffee. And what you're doing is you're putting coarser um, coffee grinds in there, okay, into your filter, whatever system you have. You're pouring hot water over it and gravity is pulling it down through the, the beans and then you have your coffee, right? Um, with espresso, what you're doing is you're, you're making a finer grind, okay, and your pressure putting all that, you're, you're squeezing all that water um, through those grinds under pressure. And like I said, it's coming out as a foam or froth and then recollecting into a liquid. It makes a huge difference. You're, you're forcefully brewing and you're, you're pushing all, that, all those oils out of those beans and the oil is the flavor. All that flavor is actually coming out. And like I said, I've, I've personally tested this where I took these coffee grinds, this this Maxwell House, um, and I used it in my Keurig in my little, you know, um, the, the my K-cup thing, whatever, so you can put grinds in. I made a cup of coffee like that, drip style, regular old coffee, and it was good, it was fine. And then I made it with this machine with the bypass doser, same grinds, same coffee, different brewing method, it tasted completely different. I picked up flavors and, and little you know, notes of flavor, um, brewing it this way as opposed to brewing it the traditional style way. So it really makes a difference. Um, and, and like I said, like anything else, first of all, this machine is not for everyone. Not everyone would want to invest the money into something like this. If you have a $10 coffee pot at home and you make black coffee and you're happy every morning drinking it, that's cool, stick with that. This is an experience though. And I think this is a big money saver for people who do quite often visit places like Dunkin' Donuts and Starbucks. If you're one of those people who are commuting every single morning and you're going to Starbucks and you have to stop on the way to work and sit in a drive through line or whatever you got to do and you're paying 6 or $7 a cup, this thing will pay itself off. Any of the machines will pay itself off. If you're interested in espresso but you don't want something like this, I think this is one of the best things for a, uh, a beginner 
like me, someone who doesn't really know anything about this, this does it all for me. Um, being that I, you know, I make everything a hobby, and coffee is a hobby for me. As much as I enjoy it, I love enjoying learning about it more. You know, where, where are the beans coming from? How are they roasted? All that kind of stuff. Um, I would, I would enjoy a, a semi-automatic machine, which, which I'm doing more hands-on work. This does everything for you. This is, like I said, it's a, a bean to cup machine. You put the beans in, you press a button, or you put the coffee grinds in, you press a button, bam, there's your coffee, or there's your uh, espresso, or your latte, you know? It's very straightforward, it does everything for you. That's why it's a super automatic. Um, but if you wanted to be more hands-on, if you wanted to really, really fine-tune all of your stuff, if, if you're really into it as a hobby, some of the semi-automatics, um, they, they can be more expensive, they can be cheaper, it ranges. But with that, what you're doing is you're, you're going to grind your beans separately with a separate grinder, like a dedicated coffee grinder, and then you're going to put it in your little porta filter, you know, which is basically it, it's all in this machine. I can't show you, but um, you know, and you you lock that in. It's kind of like what you'll see if you go to Starbucks, you know, or these these big um, you know uh, machines that the uh, the businesses use, you know, where they they're putting the coffee grinds fresh into the thing, and it's the same thing. It's just it's doing it for you. So there's a huge convenience there. And for someone like me who doesn't really know anything about it yet, or I'm just you know beginning to learn about it, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. So it does everything you need to do. And I'm going to show you the the brain of the uh, the beast here. Turn. Let me put this turn off for a second. You can see where I'm showing it off now. It's doing another cleaning cycle. I'll let that go right into the drip tray. You can see there are. Let me put this down. There are uh, holes directly underneath those spouts so it doesn't splash or anything. Now on the side of the machine here, we open this up. Uh, let me show you the grinds too. Uh, basically what happens is once it grinds your coffee, it's putting into the, uh, the brew group on the inside which I'm going to show you in a second. And it's pouring into a, a, an area and then it's actually pushing up and it's tamping. Very similar if, you were, if you're a pipe smoker or if you happen to watch some of the pipe smoking videos I've done. When you tamp your tobacco, you're compressing it, okay? So what it's doing is it's compressing the coffee grinds so that they're not loose. You want them, you know, kind of packed together. So when the, the hot water is being forcefully pushed through it, it's not going to just push right through it. It actually has to, you know, pass this dense, um, you know, section of coffee grinds. But what happens is when it, it kicks it out, it kicks it out in these little, you know, compressed pucks. All right, so they're easy to handle. It sucks all the moisture out. All right, if I were to squeeze this, it would crumble. But it's pretty easy to uh, to handle, so you're not dealing with more of a mess. But that's basically what you're grinding and uh, compressing. All right, so using about that much coffee per shot, you're getting a heck of a lot of flavor out of it. It's really cool. This uh, holds up to uh, eight pucks. I found that um, it dispenses probably five or six, and then the light will come on just because of the way they shoot in there. Um, they kind of stack on each other. Even though this will probably hold 10 or 12 of them, the sensor kicks on at about 5 or 6. Just just for reference there. But um, let me show you the, the brainchild inside, or the brain. You open the, your side up here, and this is what's called the brew group. All right, see, so just push over. The whole thing comes right out. This is basically, let me just shake this over the sink a little. I'm not dripping. This is the, uh, the brain of the machine. This is what's doing all the work inside. All right, you can see on top here, this piece right here with the O-ring, this is what your the section underneath is actually pushing up into, and that's uh, tamping your, your coffee grinds. And this whole thing pops right out as far as cleaning. You put this under your sink, you just basically rinse off the grinds in there. Um, and then there's certain spots that are greased up on the tracks where things are moving, parts are moving. Well, that makes sense, moving parts are moving. <laughs> where parts may move, there's, uh, there's grease on there, so you don't really wash this thoroughly. If you did, you know, this comes with a tube of grease, all right, so you can re-grease that if you need to. But basically all you have to do is just rinse this whole brew group, let it air dry, all right, put the whole thing right back in, and you're ready to go. Just put it right in the tracks, and it locks right in. So uh, the machine, it's, it's fantastic. Like I said, it's totally a new experience to me. Enjoying espresso in general um, has been a new experience to me. But I could not have been happier with this machine. I could not have been happier with the people um, answering my questions. The people over at Whole Latte Love has been fantastic. The website's been very informational. Their videos are awesome. Uh, I'm just obviously a huge fan. Uh, I've been just extremely, extremely satisfied uh, with everything involving this specific machine, this Gaja Barrera. I think it's it's a compromise. You know, it's 
for the price that it costs, it offers a lot. And for some people, unfortunately, you just won't see that. You'll look at it as, well, my coffee pot's 20 bucks, that's $700. I wouldn't pay that for a coffee pot. And that's fine, you're just not a person that would appreciate probably the coffee it produces anyway. So, you know, it's not for everyone. It's just like, you know, I'm looking for a, uh, an average car. I don't, I can't find myself, even if I had the money, I can't find myself paying $100,000 for a car, but hey, whatever floats your boat, you know? Um, it's all relevant. You're getting a very, very high quality product out of something like this, and uh, I'm extremely satisfied. But like I said, if, if this whole thing interests you, and espresso, and lattes, and all this stuff is like fascinating, research it. Check out their website. You can learn so much just by you know browsing their website or watching their videos on YouTube. It's really, really fascinating. I've just been extremely satisfied with their their products and uh, and their website specifically. Even if you're not into um, you know espresso, or if you're not interested in getting some kind of machine like this. They have everything you can possibly think of that's coffee related. In fact, they have a regular old coffee pot with a timer that I really want, um, just so that when I wake up, there's a cup of coffee waiting for me. That's the only thing that I would change about this machine if I could. And of course, I would add price to it and stuff like that, but it would just be a, you know, a timer so it automatically kicks on and makes it for you in the morning. But um, it's just awesome. Uh, I think as far as the uh, Super Automatics go, it's probably one of the, the best ones, the best bang for your buck. Uh, of course, when you get into the more expensive machines, you get more capacity, you don't have to fill it as often, you get a couple more options, you get like, you know, digital display, this, that, and the other thing. Um, but it's all preference, it's all what you're looking for in a machine. Uh, but the Super Automatics, like I said, it would, for me, it would be highly recommended for a beginner as far as uh, making uh, espresso at home. I think it's the most straightforward, it's the cleanest way to do it. Um, getting a semi-automatic, although I think a semi-automatic is more fun actually doing the whole process, grinding your beans, putting it in a little port filter, tamping it down yourself, doing that whole thing seems, you know, fun and ritualistic in a way, but it's definitely messier. <laughs> There's definitely more things to clean. This is simple. Oh, one more thing I want to show you real quick before I uh, go is um, you always want to clean your steam one. I showed this in the preview video and people are like, what are you doing? Uh, obviously when you're steaming or frothing milk, you get milk on here. You don't want this to dry up. Okay, it makes the mess, it's gross. You don't, you know, it's just not something you want to do. So, what you want to do is, um, let me turn my machine back on. I'm going to put this in the uh, the steam, I put this over to steam. I just have a um, clean cloth here, a little washcloth. And once this spews out a little bit of hot water or steam, I'm going to shut it back off. That's enough. And just wipe down my uh, entire steam wand here. Okay. You want to do this each time, like I said, just so that you literally don't, you can pull the whole thing off if you want to. Um, make sure that little pinhole is clean. But if nothing else, you just don't want old dried milk to sit on there. Um, it's kind of gross. <laughs> but besides that, it's just for just for the machine itself. You don't want it to clog up. So that's pretty much it. That's the uh, the Gaja Barrera. Um, I'm in love with the machine. It's fantastic. It makes extremely delicious uh, espresso. Uh, I've tried everything you can make. I mean, here's the capabilities of the machine. In a nutshell, you can make regular black coffee, but, you know, pressure brewed. You can make um, Americanas, which is the shot of espresso with water. You could just dispense water for tea, you know, tea drinks, or if you just wanted, uh, you know, if you had some kind of drink mix and you wanted to make it hot, obviously hot water for that. Uh, you can make cappuccinos. You can make uh, lattes. Uh, you can make hot, delicious hot chocolate with this machine. And trust me, I'll do a video in the future making a hot chocolate, you know, around Christmas time. Um, all you'd really want to do is just froth some milk, put some chocolate syrup in there, and bam, you're done. Probably the best uh, hot chocolate you ever have in your life. Or even better, melt some real chocolate. That's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description box. Uh, I'll definitely link you to this specific machine so you can look at the specs and the layout of the uh, website and stuff. But besides that, I'm also going to link you to Whole Latte Loves. Um, YouTube page because it's extremely informative um, uh, you know I, I learned so much and every single time I watch a video you know like sometimes you watch videos on YouTube and, and then when you're done you're like I want that <laughs> it doesn't matter it could be anything something you've never even thought of like this video I'm sure you a lot of you guys out there don't even think about coffee and now you want one of these things that's how I feel sometimes watching videos every single time I watch a whole latte love video on YouTube whatever they're showing I want it's just it's the way they present it um, like I said, they're just they're wonderful people, but 
very professional in their videos. And uh, when I made my preview video, a lot of people said, oh, you know, it's not really your style. You know, like you're doing great editing and stuff. I usually don't do a whole lot of editing, but I kind of want to get the same feel. I'm, I'm envious of their their video production. It's, it's very professionally done and pretty cool. So I want to kind of mimic that in the, uh, the preview or teaser of this machine. And yes, yes, I know the videos, uh, the music's a little goofy in there. As I said in the comments, it's free play music, so it's it's copyright free. So what are you gonna do? You know, I'd rather have some uh, some Led Zeppelin or something playing, but it doesn't really fit the video anyway. <laughs> so that's all. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions about anything at all, feel free to ask. Of course, um, some questions, more technical questions, might be more appropriate for for them. Whole latte love. By the way, very catchy name. Whole latte love. I just I'm in love. I'm in love with their company, their, their people, and their products. So, I'm sold. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Take care. Guys, I want to review this uh, espresso machine. This is a uh, Gaja Barrera super automatic machine, and I'm going to go into all the details of how this works, and, and this video is not just for uh, coffee connoisseurs or, you know, hobbyists who, who love their coffee and have a passion for coffee. If nothing else, it's it's an informative video for people who just didn't know about this kind of stuff. This is new to me. I knew that I wanted to, uh, you know, indulge into the uh, the whole world of espresso and as well as different uh, milk-based coffee drinks. I've always been a coffee fan. Ever since I was about 10 years old, I like coffee. Of course, I've gone through different phases. As a 10-year-old, I love coffee like I guess most 10-year-olds do if you do drink coffee. And that's pretty much a whole lot of uh, milk and sugar with a little bit of coffee in it. <laughs> it's more like a candy milkshake than anything else. But, uh... I remember taking a trip with my grandfather, and um, he drank his coffee black, and he refused to ever prepare it the way I wanted it, so I got used to drinking black coffee on my trip, and I came back, and I never went back. I, I preferred black coffee, just very simple. I wanted the quality bean and then, you know, quality coffee to drink and not drown that out by sugar and cream. But uh, these days, I wanted, like I said, I wanted to experiment. I kind of got into the whole Starbucks thing, and I mean, not that I personally go, but, you know, learning and reading and, and hearing about people's experiences with different coffee houses and baristas and this that and the other thing and it got interesting and i thought well, what's the big deal i've never had a cappuccino i've never had a, a latte i've never had a macchiato uh i never had any of these things didn't know what they were and i wanted to learn more about them and as you guys should probably know by now when i get into a hobby i dive in head first and so i knew i was going to get uh, an espresso machine to try out and I wanted to learn everything about it. And in doing research, I found a bunch of different companies, of course, that offer them. But there's one specific company that stood out to me in a lot of different ways. And before I really get into the review, I want to talk about that company in general. And they are Whole Latte Love. That's where I got this specific machine. That's where I got the coffee you see on the left-hand side, even the mugs on that are on the uh, um, cup warmer on top of the machine. Um, this company, first of all, their, their website layout was by far superior to any other website. And in fact, I think it's a, uh, it's a great format that I think any company can go by. When you go to the website, everything is categorized so perfectly and so conveniently, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to look through. And I've literally spent probably two or three hours looking at all their products because it's so easy to use. Um, I really wish that other knife companies and uh, you know even gun related stuff and all kinds of things that I'm interested in, all my different hobbies, uh, outdoor gear, any kind of uh, company that I'm going to be buying a product from, I wish it was set up in a very similar manner uh, to Whole Latte Love. And when you click on a product, you, you, the drop down menus, they obviously have uh, uh, user feedback with uh, reviews, but the details they give you not only on the product, but you know even comparing it to other similar products you may like. Um, having an actual like chart that's showing you the differences and the pros and cons of different things. It's just a fantastic layout. I can literally make a 20 minute video just talking about their website. But more specifically, um, the people. The people who work there. I did find that they had a YouTube channel. Uh, in fact, I dropped down one of their product um, products I was looking at and on the bottom was a, uh, a video. I started playing it and I looked at the corner I saw it was a YouTube video. I'm like, oh cool. And I double clicked on the uh, YouTube icon and it brought me to their page and I saw they had dozens and dozens of videos on different products that they offer. Uh, again, extremely professionally done, but the people, you can really tell that their staff knows what they're talking about first of all. all right, when you're selling a product, you have to know that product, not just because you read a book on it you know, or a pamphlet or you took a class. You have to know the product because you use them. It's like anything else. You trust the people who actually use the products they sell. I had called them on the phone to get some more information about a product I was interested in. 
and I've talked to both uh, Morgan uh, as well as Tracy, and they, they were really the friendliest people in the world, very uh, very welcoming and warm, and of course answered all my questions that I had. Uh, I, I just I fell in love with the idea of this company and everything they stand for. So anyway, I just want to say that I really wish that other companies were they're very ideal. Uh, as far as business goes, it's not just business. It, these are people who use these things every single day. They're down to earth. They're people just like you and me. And it's really, really fun to relate to the people you're actually buying products from. Now, like I said, I can go on for 20 minutes just talking about the website and the people. Uh, I, I'm just a huge fan. And I, I can promise you that if I need anything coffee related, even remotely coffee related or tea related, uh, they are my go to company. Uh, just extremely happy with them. But uh, anyway, yes, on to the actual review here. Um, Yes, this is a, a Gaja Barrera. Gaja is the, uh, the brand of machine, and the Barrera is the specific model. Uh, Gaja, like many other companies, have many different models. The, uh, the pros of this specific model, the, the biggest attribute to this is that it's, it's size, pretty much. Okay, this is 12 inches tall. There's a standard ruler here. All right, um, a lot of these uh, super automatic machines tend to be a little bit bigger. Um, the pro with this machine is, first of all, affordability is definitely uh, on the cheaper side. Now, when I first did a little preview of this video, um, people, of course, immediately very interested, look it up, and they go, wow, it's $674.25. And they go, wow, I probably wouldn't spend that much uh, on a coffee machine. Well, this isn't a coffee machine. Um, in fact, this uh, being a super automatic espresso machine and the quality that it does have, 